Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to come into your house and to share your word. Father, we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your leading and your guidance during this very challenging time, a time that is unprecedented in the history of our nation. But, Father, we thank you that you give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. We praise your name, Lord, for your direction and for your clarity in this time. And we pray, Father, that you will be lifted up, you'll be exalted, you'll be you will just be lifted up so high, Father, that as we lift up your name, you will draw all men unto you. Father, we pray for your anointing uh, this afternoon. Lord, we pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit rest upon us. And as we speak, as we share, Lord, as we talk concerning the things uh, that are on your heart, Father, we pray that those who are tuning in and those who are listening will be blessed, will be encouraged, will be edified, will be strengthened in the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Good afternoon and welcome to New Nation Destiny Center. We're here, um, part three of our series on After the Waiting Comes the Work. And um, God has been really speaking to me concerning this whole process of waiting that, that we're in. As a nation, um, we are in a, we are coming out of this, this lockdown. Um, but, but the Lord is speaking to his church um, in so many ways, wanting us to, to be prepared, wanting us to utilize this time wisely. And as we've been saying in, in our church for some weeks now, after the waiting comes the work. So after the lifting of even this natural lockdown, there, there is a gradual getting back to some level of normality, getting back to some level of momentum. We've seen announcements this week that people can start to go back to work, uh, discussions rega regarding education. And so the, naturally the country is mobilizing itself to resume a level of work. But we've all been in this waiting process and this waiting period. Um, and so I want to talk this, this morning, afternoon, evening whatever whatever time whatever time you're tuning into this uh, wherever you are across the nations of the earth um, amen we want to we want to share with you our, um, an aspect of this whole um, subject of after the waiting comes the work on knowing your season um, and I have with me um, Wesley Reed one of our one of our young adults future filmmaker producer hallelujah Leanne Cargill, uh, business entrepreneur, um, web designer, creative. And um, I've asked them to join me today because after I share a few, a few words, we're going to have a discussion around how do you know your season? How do you know your season? And what, what about the season um, that you're in must you do, must you prepare? So I'm going to be... Um, getting these guys to get involved um, shortly. Okay, let's go. I'm going to look at um, a scripture in Exodus. Exodus chapter 2, verse 24 and 25 to start off with. And then we're going to go into Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. So I'll read these first and then share a few points and then we'll open it up for discussion. So the word of the Lord says in Exodus chapter 2, verse 24 to 25, So God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God saw the Israelites and took notice. And then immediately in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Meanwhile, so meanwhile, as God was remembering the affliction of his people somewhere else, and you can almost, as a film producer, you can see the camera pan from one scene to the next scene, and this scene shows Moses now. It says, Meanwhile, Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, a priest of Midian. He led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, sorry, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from within a bush, and Moses saw the bush ablaze with fire, but it was not consumed. So Moses thought, I must go over and see this marvelous sight. Why is this bush not burning? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to, to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. 
And he answered, here I am. Verse 5 says, do not, God said, do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals for the place you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this, your word. We, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would bring such clarity to us this morning as we, as we open up this text by the leading of the Holy Spirit, as we look at the subject, knowing your season. Amen. Now, it's interesting that oftentimes when we are waiting, and previously we were looking at the book of Acts and how the disciples were given an instruction by the Lord to go and wait in the upper room and how the, there has been a consecutive unfolding to them of the power of the Holy Spirit, of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, or, or all by them waiting and following an instruction. And oftentimes, God wants us to know the season that we're in. If we don't know the season that we're in, we don't know how to prepare for what is coming ahead of us. So, so here we see um, the first thing that is identified in this text is that there is a need. There is a need. What was the need? The need refers to Exodus chapter 2, verse 24. God heard their groaning. Okay? So there was a, there was a need. There was a, the people were being persecuted. But also we must understand as the church of Jesus Christ that there is a prophetic timeline to this back, backdrop. God said the children of Israel would be in persecution for 400 years and then the deliverer would come. So this is coming to the end of that prophetic timeline. So God hears the need of the people. So oftentimes, if we are to understand and know the season that we're in, we've got to be very discerning of the need that there is out there. Amen. So God said, God said, I, I can hear the groaning uh, of my people. And this is interesting. He says, he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, this is very important for us to understand. God doesn't do anything by chance. He always orchestrates things according to his divine will and divine plan. We know from scripture that God had cut a covenant. A covenant is an, un, an unbreakable, ever binding agreement between God and man. And he made this covenant with Abraham. And he said to Abraham, through you, the nations of the earth will be blessed. That your, 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 your seed will outnumber the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. So there was a divine covenant that God made. And that covenant was reinstated through Isaac and then through Jacob. So it's interesting that here God comes to attention because of his covenant. And this is one of the most powerful things that we as believers have for us is that we have an unbreakable covenant with the, the God of heaven and earth. Amen. He, is, he, he establishes everything by his covenant. And so this is why sometimes when we pray to God, we must, not that he needs reminding, because God doesn't need reminding, does he? But we, almost, we're reminding ourselves by reminding him that God is God. Amen. So it says he remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is very important for this aspect of knowing your season because oftentimes we can be going through trials and going through very difficult situations and really not realizing that all of it is useful for God outworking his plan in our lives and for fulfilling our season in God. Amen. So, so he said that in verse 25, God saw the Israelites and he took notice. Amen. There's nothing that we do. And I listened to an amazing word by Bishop T.D. Jakes recently that someone sent to me, bless them, um, out of the blue, a very old message that Bishop T.D. Jakes spoke on from exactly the same text that I'm using today. And it was nothing that you have been through will be wasted. 
no trial, no tribulation, no difficulty, no, no, no years of service anywhere that you're doing. You may be in a job or you may be doing something and you may be thinking, you know, how long until my blessing, how long until I, you know, I, I am the manager, or how long until, and God sees and knows all of your labor and will use all of your experience for a divine shift in your future and in your career. Amen. So we understand that there was a need. We understand that God remembered his covenant. These are two key issues that we've got to really, really remember when it comes to knowing our season. Because no season starts without God. No season moves without God. No season finishes without God. Even if we understand the word season, it's a word that is used predominantly to describe nature, to describe the climate change, to describe a shift from autumn to winter, from winter to spring, from spring to summer. But it is also a word that can be used to describe a shift in a person's life or period of life. So you may, you may feel or sense that my season for laboring in a certain field is, is, is coming to an end. And, and, and just as um, and there's one thing that God said will never, never change is seed time and harvest time. And that relates to seasons. So you may find that, and I, I say this all the time, you never stay in university all your life. You go to university for a period of time, and that is our educational season. Once that season is up, we then put into practice what we have learnt while we have been in that season. So this word season is important for us because it speaks about a shift a divine shift in activity. So, Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. We're going to read two verses from this, and then we'll open up for some discussions with these precious guys. Meanwhile, Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, a priest of Midian. He led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from within the bush. And Moses saw the bush ablaze with fire, but it was not consumed. So, Mo, so Moses thought, I must go over and see this marvelous sight. Why is this bush not burning up? So we're talking about knowing your season so let, let's just look a little bit about, look, uh, on Moses. Moses was uh, born uh, in a time where there was a lot of persecution and all of the children were, were, were killed and his mother hid Moses in a basket and then one of the, 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 the daughter of Pharaohs found him and nurtured him and raised him. But there was something always in Moses that knew that he, although he was part of this community, there was something else that had to rise in him. Destiny is often like that. You may find yourself in an environment for years and you may think, well, I know that I'm here, but I'm destined for more or destined for greater. Moses was in Egypt for 40 years. He was serving. He was, he was in, in the royal palaces. He had servants. He had, he had the best education. He had all of those things for him until a moment came where God shifted his season. He went from being in a comfortable place to being in an isolated place. And so this, the, the, the situation was that Moses saw something and he addressed it and, and he killed one of, the, one of the soldiers of the Egyptian guard. And then he was basically uh, uh, excommunicated out of Egypt. Now, to Moses at that time, he may have thought, what on earth is happening in my life? Why I've been in Pharaoh's palace all these, all these years. I've grown up having the best. I've had the best food. I've had the best clothes. I've had the best luxuries. I've had everything around me. I didn't want for anything. And all of a sudden now, I'm being treated like a criminal and excommunicated out of the land where I have been for all this time, not realizing that sometimes God needs to push us out of the nest. Sometimes God needs to move us to a place where we need to feel a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes God needs to shift us in order to, to, to kickstart our season. 
Because sometimes if we stay in that place of comfort for too long, we will begin to, we'll begin to work in a, in a season that we were never destined to be in. Hey, have you ever been in a job or been in a place or been in and realized the season's changed? It's time to move. It's time to do something else. It's, you know, you, we, this, this is what happened to Moses. So fast forward now. Moses meets Jethro, the priest of Midian. He meets his daughter. He gets married. And the story is that Moses then spends 40 years tending to Jethro's flock. And this is an amazing paradox because this is someone who had everything, that didn't want anything, that had no need of anything. But then he found himself in a place where he was now serving someone else's vision. He was now serving, not for one year, not for two years, not for five years, for, for 40 years, serving, tending to those sheep, serving another man's vision. And sometimes God will have it that you serve another man's vision until you, 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 you demonstrate integrity, you demonstrate credibility, you demonstrate that you can serve in order to, for them to be positioned to have your own. So it says, the scripture says, Moses was shepherd in the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. Remember? So he had a shift in status. He was a prince of Egypt. And now he was the prince of the sheep. Leading the sheep around the whole of the wilderness. He says he led them to the flock. He led the flock as far as the side of the wilderness. And he came to Horeb. And now, Something interesting uh, to, to note, whenever you are called by God to do anything, God will find you in your wilderness experience. It doesn't matter how barren your situation may feel. If God has got a destiny on your life, he will find you. Horeb means the mountain of God. So here's Moses now going around this wilderness 40 years, going around, taking the sheep. And one of the things that we must understand about shepherds is they know where to take the sheep to nurture them and to feed them. Okay? So God was training Moses, even in his barrenness, even in his wilderness, how to shepherd. How to know where to take the sheep. How to know where to water them. How to know where to feed them. How to know where for them to take rest what to do with them, what, when, when, when he should rest with the sheep in case there's any wolves or predators. That everything that Moses was learning in these 40 years of serving his father-in-law was to prepare him for what God was about to call him into. And sometimes our seasons of harshness are to prepare us for where we're about to move into. We've got to learn stamina. Okay, we've got to learn stamina. So, then, so this aspect speaks about God's divine positioning in our season. And how, as believers, we must not disqualify ourselves by short-circuiting our seasons before their time of maturity. Sometimes one of the worst things we can do is say, oh, I don't care anymore. I don't, I've had it with this company. I've had it with these people. I've had it with this environment. I'm not doing that anymore. And I'm kind. And we walk away from things, short-circuiting what God was trying to do in those seasons. And so Moses had to go through this time. Now, interestingly, if I ask this question, I'll ask this question, but answer it in a moment. But Mount Horeb, mountain of God, was always there. It didn't move. It didn't just appear. It was always there. So it lets us know that God could have intervened at any point because God and God's mountain was always there. But God had to wait until an appointed time of maturity in Moses in order for God to then appear. Sometimes our breakthroughs don't appear because we're not ready. Okay, we're talking about knowing your season. Okay, last two, two verses, and then we'll open up some points for discussion. Uh, it says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him 
in a blazing fire. So, so remember, he, he's walking around with the, sh with the sheep. He comes to Mount Horeb, and now he sees this bush that is blazing with fire, but is not consumed. So the next thing that happens oftentimes in your season is that you begin to see differently. And oftentimes when God matures us in his word and by faith, our perspective about things change. And sometimes when you start your season, you may get frustrated, impatience. But then at God, as God cultivates patience and tolerance and endurance, we learn to forgive quickly. We learn to have more patience with people. And then God begins to do something in us. And over, over a period of time, we begin to change. And suddenly God realizes, okay, I can tick that box because Michael's learned patience. He's learned, and then God appeared, and God allowed Moses to see this bush that was burning. Now, interesting, in order for a season to change, you've got to see it. You've got to see it. Whenever, whenever a seasons come, and, and let's just use nature, for example, we can stand outside of our houses, and you can stand in your gardens, and you can look up at the sky, and you can know tomorrow's going to be a sunny day because the stars are clear, there's no clouds. So what is that? It's an ability to interpret seasons. It's ability to interpret. So we can stand, snow's falling, the clouds are all white. We know, okay, it's going to snow. We can tell, snow on the ground, it's winter. We can discern with our eyes what seasons we're in. We must be able to discern also with our spiritual eyes what season we're in. We have to look out for those moments of God encounter when God's going to turn up and show himself. So, but let me just say this, it's not enough to just see. Moses saw, but it wasn't enough. And we're going we're gonna to stop at this next point, and then the rest of those three or four verses we're going to carry on with next week. Um, the next verse says, Moses thought to himself, I must go over and see this sight. So here you see a self-assessment in that season. Moses said, you know what? I've walked around this wilderness for 40 years and I've never seen, I, I know all the bushes. I know all the trees. I know the trees where I can go to the toilet. I know the trees where I need to hide. If someone, I know all of the trees in this wilderness and I've never seen a tree that is burning so I'm going to go and see this tree. And he said to himself, I must see this marvelous sight. This speaks of that we must be able to challenge our own self in the midst of our seasons. We must be able to challenge. We must be able to know something about this season is different. Something about this season is different. Something about this season. If I'm honest with you, I felt, I felt something shifting from the middle of last year. And there was a number of things that I started to cancel and I started to, to cease doing because of my spirit. It was almost like I, I, I need to cut down the amount of activities that I'm doing. And I couldn't really put my finger on it only to then move into 2020 and all of this is broken out and everything is basically locked down. What was God saying to me is saying there's a shift coming and there's a season change coming. You need to get ready and be prepared for it, okay? So Moses saw, so we must challenge ourselves in our season. And interestingly, and this is the last point, God didn't start speaking to Moses until he turned. It was, it's not enough in your season to just see. You know, it's not in, the Bible says that we must be uh, doers of the word also. Be not heroes of the word, but be doers of the word also. It means that in, in every ability to see, there must be a corresponding action to do. So it's not enough to just think and see, you know, I feel like I need to shift and I need to change my job or I need to change my career or I need to do some extra studies and maybe go back to university or college and do something. It's not enough to just say it. We've got to be people that begin to do it because it's in the doing that then God continues to speak. So in this text, and we're going to close it here now and open up for discussion with Leanne and Wesley, it's not enough to just see that there's a need in a season. We've 
got to then move towards it. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So as we move in faith, we continue to hear. As, we, as, as Moses moved towards the bush and God saw, it says in verse 4, when the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out to him, Moses, Moses. So God will speak as we move. So even, even if you're in a season where you think, uh, I have no idea what's going on, but you get an inclination of the direction, as you start to move by faith, God will continue to speak. Amen? So we've looked at a couple of things. Let me just, let me just summarize, just so that the guys can think of some questions maybe they have, or I'm going to put some questions to them. Um, there was a need. There was God remembering the covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There was then the positioning of Moses. There was then the seeing of Moses. And there was then the turning of Moses, which then led to God speaking. And there's so much more after that, which we'll look, we'll look at next week with another group of, of, group of guys. Um, so so I, I'm going to open up discussions now with Leanne and, and Wesley about this whole concept of knowing your season. What, what does that mean to you guys, knowing your season? I mean, when, you, when you're in your season, it's just about that's the time when you've got to be doing what it is that God has for you to do. And as like people sometimes, we always have it in our head that if, even though we've got an inkling on what, what's supposed to happen, we like it will come when I'm feeling it, when I, when I feel like I'm ready to do it. And that's, that's what Moses' per perception was when he was up in Egypt. But then it was when he went down to um, the wilderness and he had, had his 40 years there that he was ready for it. But at that time as well, he kind of felt like he wasn't ready for it. And that's where the faith comes in yeah, because we have to it. fight that all the time. So, so, what, so just making it a little bit more yeah, personal. No, 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 it's, it's fine, no, it's fine. Um, how do you know, uh, as Wesley Reed, yeah. how do you know your season? And how do you know, because there may be some people out there that are, um, th you know, they're in a season and it might be a season of education, it might be a season of work, and, and they're unsure of what to do. Is there, is there anything that you can say or your advice as, as a believer as to what you do to help you to, to know what to do in your season? Well, I'd say for everyone it's a bit different. But I'd say for me personally, because I've been through that sa same sort of experience actually, because when I was initially in college, I had two years. Like going with my normal school, I'd finished college. But in my spirit, I felt like what the course I was going on wasn't where I was supposed yeah. to be going on. And spiritually, I felt like there was something else I was supposed to be doing. But me, like my flesh, I didn't want to stay another two years. And the reason for that was because I didn't really want to be... Because if I stopped at extra two years, I'd be with people again today. Yeah. And in my head, I didn't even realise this was a problem and this was something that God was doing with me in that season. Um, I had it in my head that, not meaningly, that I'd almost put myself on a pedestal because being with younger ones, I felt like, even though it's only two years, I had it in my head that, oh, they're two years younger than I shouldn't be chilling with like these people two years younger. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I know we're on the same level learning this, but I'm older than them at the end of the day. I'm supposed to know more than them, so I don't really want to be around them. But that was something the Lord had to do in me. But because it felt wrong on the physical, but it felt right on the spiritual, yeah. That's how I knew. And it was a lot of backwards and forwards. I had like, a lot of conversations with uh, my mum and my dad about it. And it was, it was, ter it was tearing me apart for quite a while because I had a, a conversation with the tutor that was leading the course. Because the course that I started as well, it wasn't even a course yeah. beforehand. And that's how you know it was all in God's time. Oh, and that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. season for that. Because I couldn't have done yeah. it before. Yeah. Because it, so wasn't it wasn't the before. season for the course yeah, yeah. prior to. So yeah, you're yeah. waiting. You Almost it. you had to wait for the course to, mm. to be developed in order for you to get in. Amen. That's it. Excellent. So conversation, you said something interesting. You had conversations with people, your parents in particular, 
about what to do and and that's important as well knowing who to speak to having the confidence of a certain group of people around you to give you advice that will be constructive in, in this situation let me ask the same question to Leanne. how how do you know your season and and um and how do you prepare in your season yeah that's a good question um i definitely can relate and identify with everything that Rosa said um i go where there's peace i think i've learned now that hearing the voice of god doesn't necessarily come in an audible way or verbally but when you have that set you settled you've made a decision or a choice or there's something that you've got to make a decision and a choice about it's quite significant it can be a huge turning point in your life but the main thing is all right lord i don't want to for instance like what you were saying Wes, there was something in you that wanted one thing and then but you knew your spirit was telling you to do another so like feeling something like that you can know okay am i idolizing something here is there something that god's got to work out in my character and i feel like i always have to make my checks with god yeah. so if a decision is presented to me i'm like all right lord i initially wanted to do this is that my will or your will yeah. and i actually have to have these conversations because especially at the time in my life i don't want any delays i don't want to have to backtrack i don't want to have to go a longer way like i want the most direct route possible so a lot of um what you're saying is about purpose and knowing what it is it's about um checking with the lord getting that confirmation that peace to know okay yeah i'm heading in the right direction it's not quite what that person's saying or that person's saying and also wise counsel so people who you know hear from god so yeah we all have friends and acquaintances and things like that who will ask questions to but when it comes to destiny and purpose i want to know if i'm speaking to a certain person about something i want to know you hear from god and that you have that peace and you have that settlement yeah. as well so excellent and this is one of the key things because we have an advantage that moses didn't have uh, moses had to wait 40 years of trial and error we don't have to wait 40 years because we have access to the father through jesus christ we have access to the holy spirit we have access to the word we have access to godly counsel we know we've have so many routes or pathways to um, help and assistance that really if if things are and, and oftentimes a season can be prolonged not by the lack of availability of resources but by our own character uh, i was speaking to someone um, yesterday and uh, Sister Lee, and we were talking about some of the challenges that we have seen throughout christianity and irrespective of denomination irrespective of belief system um, and the person said this and they thought it was such a well 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 articulated statement he said the challenges is Jesus's name requires Jesus's nature and oftentimes we do not carry the nature reflective of the name and so irrespective of whatever denominational belief you have it's about the character and sometimes we prolong our seasons because we don't allow God to do the deal with the character issues in the wilderness or in the season and so God may be dealing with patience. He may be dealing with tolerance. He may be dealing with forgiveness. He may be dealing with financial management. He may be dealing with all sorts of stuff. But the, the, the minute we short circuit that, we, we, we lessen the ability for God to give us clarity of how to get out or w- work through a season. Can I also say something, Pastor, yeah. as well? One thing that came to me today when I was talking to God was that you see, like, when you go through seasons of disappointment and sometimes everyone might react differently and some might pull away from God, some might push into God even more. But I'm finding now that dealing with disappointment is nothing compared to dealing with success. Because when you deal with success, your character has to be so integral. You have to be able to hear from God. You have to be able to know that's not for me or you don't idolize all the things that God's going to add on to you because when you are in his perfect will, he's just going to keep blessing you and blessing you. If he can trust you, he'll bless you even more. And there's certain things in our character that if they're not submitted to him, 
will get to a place of like be elevated to the next level. And obviously, we want to give um, honor and glory to His name. So, in the world, we want to be that burning bush that everyone can see, and you know, be like, "Oh, how did you get there?" And then that opens up a conversation about God. But if you're not integral and those things aren't submitted to God, that can be really dangerous. Yes. Can I ask you just to say that again? <laughs> just <laughs> that. Just, that yeah. <laughs> dealing with disappointment is nothing compared to, compared dealing, with to dealing with success. Yeah. You heard it first here. <laughs> Dealing with disappointment is nothing. Because, and this is something that I've heard year for years, and, and our spiritual father, Dr. Jonathan David, has labored with this for years as teaching for all of his Isaac pastors and spiritual sons across the network. His character and integrity are fundamental. And so, yeah, you can, you can, you can get through life and situations that are, you know, disappointments and challenges and so forth. But sometimes it's when God starts to bless you that really highlights some of the issues that are in your heart. You didn't realize you're stingy until you had money. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't want to give nobody nothing, you know. So, so okay, let me ask you, I've got two more questions to ask you. Uh, Wes, um, how do you deal with the waiting period in your season? <laughs> how do you how do you deal with the waiting period? So you're in a season, you know, um, you know. Uh, let's let's take university now. You know, it's it's a certain period, it's a certain season of life, and you you know, with all of its complexities, um, how do you deal with? How do you work through? How do you deal with the waiting three years, four years? How do you deal with all of that? How do you how do you you know rein in your mind and and all of that? Um, actually, you know what's just come to mind? Because going back to that whole like period uh, when I was in college with Paul and I, I said it was like I wanted to like go in that like straight path, but also just like let loose a little bit more and like go backwards. Um, I can't remember when it was. It was a few years back, but we had um, a meeting for the, uh, one of your things Lee, up at the top there. And, yeah, yeah. And um, we, were talk we were talking about um, our journeys and stuff. And like when we were having that talk about the journey, I think it was that point more than anything that I realise that I'm actually enjoying the journey. So for a lot of people, everyone's always seeing, oh, I want to be here, I want to get there. But you've got to remember, when you like get there, it's like, not not saying that the, the journey will be done, there might be like some other stuff to be doing, but what you'll be thinking back on is the how you got there, and you've got to enjoy time while, while it's going. So you've just got to... Not so much living the not so much living the moment, but enjoy the time that you've got. Look look around. Don't be like rushing. Develop yourself. Grow yourself. And just yeah. Excellent, enjoy. excellent, excellent. Because in in your season, you know whatever the time frame of the season, we have to we have to live it. Yeah. We have to live it, and that living it is enjoying it. And there's nothing worse than being miserable. In a, in a season that may last for some years or some months. So, so excellent, excellent. Yeah, um, I, I can yeah. definitely agree with that. And when you asked the question, that made me laugh because I wasn't waiting well. <laughs> there was a lot of things that I was not waiting well for. And I was always... We have to learn how to <laughs> wait well. Yeah. Amen. That's another word. <laughs> yeah. It's embarrassing because I liken it to... You know when you're playing a game with someone and I'm a bit of a sore loser... So you can't really celebrate when you're winning if you've been a sore loser the whole time. Yeah. So I never want to look back and be like, oh, I have to hold it down now because I wasn't winning then and now I am. So um, I, I feel like the penny dropped for me probably last year when there was a lot of things that I feel like I'm waiting for. And I'm like, but Lord, you said this, you said this. I didn't. Cons I was considering the time frame of my, how I would have expected it to go. And then... Um, I started to be present, like be here, like oh, be here I in this moment. I started to be present. Yeah, like I didn't ever want to look the back. Anointing. <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> I felt the anointing on this. <laughs> I didn't ever want to look back and then arrive at a destination, like idolize this destination so much. And then we missed, like what you said, the whole journey to get in there. Like that was probably the saddest thing that, okay, I'm here now. Been moaning about it the whole time. I'm here now. Now what? But it is. It's like when you are present in that, like being on the potter's wheel and 
all that kind of stuff. And you're like, all right, Lord, I really want to get to know you in this season. I don't ever want to get into the next season and look back and be like, oh, I wish I was back there again. No, I just think that's so disrespectful. That's so, so, so profound. We have to learn how to wait well. We must learn how to. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall walk and not faint. And, and, and so there is a blessing in waiting the right way. There's, a, there's, a, there's success in waiting the right way. <laughs> waiting the wrong way leads to stress, anxiety, frustration, and, and sometimes short-circuiting the, wa the waiting period. And just to add on to that, because there's people that are watching your journey. Yay, there's come on There's always now. people watching come your journey. So if you've been moaning and complaining the whole, whole time, time yeah, and yeah. then you get to, and yeah. remember, we're supposed to believe in God, you know. Yeah. So if you're just like, well, if you're moaning and complaining, like what, why would I have any need to come to yeah. the, to the yeah. God that you That's serve? Right. That's but right. if you're like, it kind of confounds people yeah. when you're happy, or mm -hmm. joyful, mm -hmm. and you're content, mm -hmm. but things aren't going the way that you would want them to, it, they kind of can't yeah, understand yeah, yeah. Can't that. Can't fathom it, can't understand it, can't comprehend how you can wait for it and be happy at the same time. Yeah, excellent. Um, there's another question. I've got, I've got one more okay, okay, go for it, Wes. It's because, um, also as well, because we've, we've got to remember as believers as well, God doesn't set anyone up to fail He's always got like the best outcome for us and he wants us to enjoy life at the end of the day. So we've got to be enjoying it because we've got a responsibility for like people that aren't believers as well to like be setting the standard and stuff. But we can't let that responsibility like stress us out in because God's got the best for us. We'll be enjoying whatever Amen. it is that he's got for us. It will be good at the end of the day. We've just Amen. got to look for the good things. So, so no, no, keep that because you, 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 the timing was impeccable because this next question was, how do you deal with failure in past seasons? So you just spoke about, you know, God hasn't set us up to fail and that's absolutely right. But sometimes we do fail. Um, uh, uh, it could be failure in character. It could be failure in that we're disappointed. It could be failure because we don't know how to wait well. And so how do we deal with failure in our past seasons and not allow those failures to kind of migrate into this next season or this current season that we're in? I'd say more than anything, you need to humble yourself. And going back to what you were saying there, Robert, about we've got to watch who we surround ourselves with. We've got to look for counsel, like-minded people. And we've got to be using those mistakes to grow. Because the thing is, if we're not humble at the end of the day, when people try and tell us stuff, or even when God's directly trying to show us things, putting things in front of us, we're going to be like all like stush in there and we're not going to want to listen to anything and we'll be stuck within that and then we'll miss seasons that are coming and and I've got a question for that actually afterwards. Um we'll miss things that are like coming our way. So we've just got to we've got to be ready for it. So we have to be ready. Do you want to add anything? Joining a uh, New Nation Destiny Centre which really helped me to deal with failure, which was obviously you don't you're not gonna shout about every bad thing that you go through. But to own it like be as transparent as you can be to those who see your life as a as a ministry to others so I feel and personally I'm the kind of person that I relate more when I've heard somebody's story even warts and all and I can see how they've come back yeah. from it yeah. like for me that's like oh, I can relate with that that's real I know everybody some people like you know the high-res version which is just oh everything went great and it was a really <laughs> smooth sailing and blah blah blah, blah. but that's not life but that's not life it's not life so when you're speaking to somebody who can love God, declare the word of the Lord, um, you know, still worship Jesus, still be human and relatable, still know that they've been through things, I think that's far more powerful than somebody who pretends like they're perfect, yeah. personally. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, fa failure is part of our, I mean, I, I, every believer, there's no one on this earth that has not messed up in some way, said something wrong, you know, spoke out of turn, did something, and that, whatever it was. And the, the, the we, may, we may well have many failures in our past season, but 
it is so important. Isaiah 43 says, remember no more the former things, nor consider, meditate, or dwell on things of the past. For behold, the Lord wants to do a new thing. So it's important to own it, to know it, to walk through it, but to not walk with it into, into our next season, into our season that we're in. Um, last question then for today, um, which is how do you deal with serving another, another person's vision while you're waiting? <laughs> that is, yeah. How do you deal with, how do you deal with, where, because if we're taking it from Exodus chapter 3, obviously, aren't we? And we're saying Moses was serving for many years, serving his father-in-law, sheep as a shepherd to them serving another man's vision, not really realizing it was preparation for something greater that was to come. But, you know, how, how do you serve another person's vision when you know you're qualified? When you know you're, or you're qualified to move, when you know you're, how do you serve another person's vision? Um, that is a very good question. Um, I don't know if I can answer that exactly because... When I've, part of my career and my job anyway is to help people realise their visions and their ideas and make it into something. So that for me, I find joy in that anyway. Um, but, and also one of the things that I had to overcome in my journey, in my professional career, was always thinking that I wasn't good enough. So I would always want to be under somebody telling me what to do. So it's kind of the other way around. But um, I do have like a testimony of mine for my business because I remember having um, a meeting with the junior police commissioner and I remember him asking me, you know, I know you like to do workshops with young people and you like to talk to them about financial intelligence and about purpose and vision and blah, blah, blah. Um, but how would you feel if, if we didn't basically buy your workshops as a package? How would you feel about facilitating your workshops on the behalf of the police commission? And um, it was it was a good question because it helped me even to test my own heart that that was that's something fine for me, and I'm very much like if God has called me to something, I don't feel like I'm I don't think I don't feel like I, I want to do anything off my own back, and I'm more concerned if I want to do something off my own back. So to serve somebody else, I feel like it's kind of an opportunity to say, can you trust me, Lord? Can you trust me? Like, can that person yeah. trust me? If I can, you know, if can trust me the little, then hopefully he can trust me yeah. with much. Um, so I kind of use it like that. So how do you how do you deal with serving another vision while you're waiting? Well, I'd say uh, again, this is uh, something that relates to everybody in the world because uh, um, everyone at the end of the day is isn't born to be alone. Everyone's like born to be united. And in, I can't remember which commandment it was, but uh, God has it that you've got to treat the, uh, your neighbour as you treat yeah. yourself. Yeah. And, that, and it, sh it should just naturally give you joy because when you're helping someone else, you don't help someone else. We shouldn't be in the mindset anyway to be helping someone else so they'll help us. We've got, we've all got to grow together. And you can't have growth for yourself, by yourself. You need, oh, you need, you need, yeah. Say you that again, say that again, Wes. <laughs> There's some <laughs> points coming out today. I'm taking all of them in my book. Go on, no, go on. You can't have growth for yourself by yeah. yourself. Yes, yeah. you can't have growth for yourself by yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Excellent, excellent. Because um, God, God has it for like people to be in our lives and stuff. So you ju you've just got to be open to like whenever your time comes for you to be doing that for others, it will come and you just need to be open to when it's coming and know when it's coming and just help out your fellow man at the end of the day because you're not going to get anywhere if you're not by yourself. So there has to be enjoy, a, enjoy the an awareness and an understanding of the importance of co-laboring, serving each other and serving for each other. And Yeah, excellent, excellent. Excellent. I think, was that the last question? Did I say that was the last question? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So let, let's just pray and close. Next week, we'll, we will be looking at the next part of this. Um, and it, it is all in the context of after the waiting comes the work. And in this season, God is allowing us to look closely at the waiting period and knowing our season in this waiting period. Um, so next week, we're going to look at the remainder of 
those verses from verse 3 up to verse 7 and 8, um, which deals with God speaking, which deals with the God reinforcing the covenant and deals with some other purification for the process and all sorts of stuff. So join us next week as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time that we have had. We thank you, Father, that you, you, are, you are so evident and you are so clearly interested in our process. You are interested in our season. You are interested in making us aware of our season. You are interested in helping us and guiding us through our season. And, and I, I love what your word says in James chapter 1. It says, let patience have its perfect work so that we are complete and lacking nothing. Help us, Father, to perfect, uh, to perfect ourselves whilst we are in this process, whilst we are in this waiting period, whilst we are in our season, readying us for the shift that is about to come, for the change of season, mobilizing us, readying us, Father. Help us to not short-circuit our destiny by aborting seasons prematurely, but help us to guard ourselves and be so close to you. Incline our ear to you, Father, so that we will always hear what thus says the Lord in the in our season. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. One of the powerful things about the life of Moses is that God spoke so intimately with Moses. And it's littered throughout the whole of Exodus and Deuteronomy. You hear God say, and the Lord said to Moses, and the Lord said to Moses, and the Lord said to Moses. One of the key things about knowing your season is being able to communicate and commune with God. Amen. So I pray that it's a blessing to you. Um, from NNDC, we're out for now. We'll see you again next week for part four of After the Waiting Comes the Work. God bless you.